Hey everyone, we're closing out our trip in Taipei for our factory tours. We have a lot of factory footage live already, and we have more coming to the, the channel, including a couple of tours of a power supply facility, if it's not already online by the time this video goes up. But now we have an update on MSI. We visited MSI to check out some of their upcoming motherboards, and one of them was the X570 Tomahawk. And that board specifically is supposed to be a response to VRM thermal concerns. So we're going to report on the updates to the X570 Tomahawk and uh, also talk about some of the cases that MSI is working on just briefly before they come to market later this year. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is what we've been using for years to manage our own Gamers Nexus store, and we've been incredibly happy with the choice. Squarespace makes e-commerce easy for those interested in starting stores, but it also has powerful tools to build all types of websites. Photo galleries for photographers, resume and portfolio sites, and small business sites are all easily done through Squarespace. Having built a lot of client websites the old way before running GN full-time, we can easily recommend Squarespace as a powerful, fast solution. Go to squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So first for the motherboard, it's the X570 Tomahawk. This board, it was shown at CES and not too much has changed, but now it's being positioned more strategically as a response to concerns of MSI's VRMs running among the hottest of the X570 boards. MSI says that the memory is mostly unchanged. It's still daisy chained, but they have a couple of updates between PCB versions 1.1 and 1.3, namely that the PCB version 1.3, which will be the full retail version that you all will be able to buy later, will have improved spacing between the circuits, which should improve memory performance and memory overclocking performance especially. It should get it closer to the rest of MSI's X570 lineup from what the company has told us. The heatsink is large, but we had a couple of criticisms of it. It's uncertain at this point whether any of our criticisms will make it into the final product. I should note that the X570 Tomahawk was originally planned for mass production this month, so March, but that all got pushed back due to human malware. So MSI, we actually, I'll talk about this for a bit too. MSI's factory in Shenzhen we've visited before. It was shut down for about two months because of first Lunar New Year, and then the extended shutdown for CV concerns. And they're just now getting back online, but the issue, the postponement of the X570 Tomahawk is for more reasons than just MSI's factory being shut down, is that the supply factories were affected. So the heat sink manufacturers, and then you could also have some ripple effects through SMD manufacturers. And even if the SMD makers, the, the service mount device makers are still operating, they buy all their materials from someone, so metal suppliers, raw material suppliers, and those factories might be affected as well. So the end result is that mass production moves from this month to probably April, maybe May, but they're pushing for the X570 Tomahawk to come out as soon as they can get it out, uh, ideally before Ryzen 4000 series start, parts start shipping, but it, it is de delayed definitely until at least April at this point. So anyway, the heatsink, uh, the upside of the delay is that it's possible there could be some changes implemented, but overall it's fairly finalized. The heatsink we think needs some holes in it to breathe. Right now it looks like a very large heatsink. It's just, it's a narrow stack on top of the MOSFETs and then just a bridge over towards the IO. And it, the whole point of it is to cover the IO and make it look uniform and pretty as motherboard manufacturers are often attempting to do these days. The downside, the thing we're concerned about is that heat generation from the MOSFETs will sort of pool in that area between the I.O. and the heat sink, and it'll just create a hot pocket of air, a hot pocket of air, <laughs> free advertisement for them. There's no escape for the air out of the rear I.O. though. And so we've recommended punching some holes in there somewhere, either uh, slats in the VRM heat sink or just holes in the back where the I.O. shield is, because right now it's kind of a heat trap. It's still a big heat sink, it's a lot of mass, but there's not a ton of service area. And MSI is looking at increasing the fin density and actually doing proper fins for their heat sinks for future motherboards that we can't talk about today. So that's a good move. It's one that Gigabyte made a couple of years ago. But as far as the X570 Tomahawk, it's still mostly just a large piece of metal that's made first for visuals and, and for function second. Uh, that said, the VRM, should take care of a good amount of the dissipation or the spread of heat across the surface area of the board. 
we'd have to see in testing if it actually is a, a market improvement over the existing boards from MSI. But what we know today is that it uses ISL 99360s. They are 60 amp power stages. I'm gonna send all this information over to Buildzoid and he's gonna make sure that uh, it looks good. He'll provide his opinion on it. We'll run a video. But there's 60 amp power stages. It's 12 phase, uh, two phases for the SOC and the controller a 12 phase for the v, for v core, I should say. Controller is an ISL 69247, and the doubler is an ISL 6617A. The board is supposed to cost 200 to $210. So the price point hasn't really changed since CES, but MSI was a bit more hesitant in giving us that price, and it sounds like it might move around in the upwards direction a little bit as a result of some changes that they've made specifically because of concerns with the VRM thermals on their motherboard. So they're increasing the cost to improve the thermal performance because obviously you need to spend more money to improve the components. Uh, other info on the board. So the, well, other than the heatsink kind of being lacking in our opinion, the, the other things to know, CPU fan and pump fan are up near the RAM. The bottom row down at the south end of the motherboard has four fan slots all next to each other, fan headers. And uh, the, there's two RGB headers near the RAM. There's an easy debug LED, pretty standard stuff. And all the boards, including this one that MSI is making, are moving towards type C support for front panels in the future. Uh, additional information, the 90 degree connectors that have started to become po popular with Gigabyte and EVGA, MSI is looking into those, but has no further comments at this point. So you might see a 90 degree 24 pins at some point in the future from them. The Thermal performance, we haven't tested the board, we don't have it, but MSI has run internal tests and uh, we did ask about their methodology and it sounds reasonable, but we haven't run the test ourselves, so, you know, grain of salt. Uh, currently, it looks like MSI is expecting the X570 Tomahawk to be around where the X570 Unify performs in terms of VRM thermal performance. MSI measures this with a FLIR thermal camera. Uh, we criticize those a lot, but there are times when they make sense and a lot of that depends on how much money you spend on one. So uh, assuming they're using a good FLIR imager, it should be within a couple degrees of a thermocouple. A thermocouple is going to give you more data resolution under the heat sink, whereas the FLIR cameras are more useful for removing the heat sink and getting a baseline measure of how does the VRM do without a heat sink. And then once you put the heat sink on, you obviously can't see the FETs anymore and measuring the metal doesn't help. So you'd have to take PCB measurements near the VRM. But anyway, they say it should be a bit uh, right around where the Unify is, if you're curious about that. Additional information, the cases are kind of disappointing at present, but have headroom. So MSI has actually implemented some of our feedback. Uh, we feel like the, the bulk of the major items we've provided feedback on, were, it's kind of been left out of the cases, but they are improving in some areas. So the Secura 100R and the Gungnir 110R are the new cases. The both models made more of a gap between the front of the chassis and the front of the front panel so that the fans mounted at the front of the case can pull air in more successfully at that 90 degree angle where it enters the case. They haven't really ventilated the front at all. The Gungnir 110R is the case that's got a big glass sheet on the front left side of the panel. And apparently they're gonna have a mesh version of that where the uh, the glass on the front left would be removed and then mesh would be used instead. So that's a potential area for a case that's not completely horrible for thermals. We'd have to test it. We're supposed to have units potentially coming on the way. Both have type C support. The pricing is 110 for the Secura 100R and 80 to $90 for the Gungnir. I had a lot of criticisms of the cases and we talked about this at CES, but we sort of break it into two pieces where for cases, there's sort of the case manufacturers who generally know what they're doing most of the time. And then there's the motherboard makers and they're two different camps. The motherboard makers can't seem to really get it right so far. Asus has done the second worst job at making computer cases that don't suck. And Gigabyte has done the first worst job at making cases that don't suck. Uh, MSI is not really, they haven't really made the push that Asus has so far into cases. They've also been the most open to listening to criticism and they've tried the hardest in implementing it, but there's the problem where they don't own the factory. So unlike a company like Cooler Master or Lian Li, where we've seen their factories and they can deploy changes and roll them out immediately, MSI has to rely on whatever its supplier can sell it. 
And that often means very limited customization options. So there's a lot of places still where we're hoping to see MSI improve in its case design department, but right now it's still pretty weak. And the biggest problem is thermals and air intake at the front of the case. We talked to them a lot about it. It's mostly glass and aluminum right now. There's some upsides. MSI has got a decent handle on quality in terms of the panel quality. The chassis, I haven't really played with it, but the front panels feel good. It's just they're, they're not the right design for us. Uh, other items of note, the removal of the side panels is similar to Lee and Lee's currently. It's all prototype, it's not out yet. And um, if they go forward with that and do the, the top removal to secure the two side panels, with then six pins holding it in. That would actually be a really good feature. So the side panel security is one of the best things they've done, but it's that's, that's the primary feature that we liked on it. So the thing that MSI is trying to do right now is overcome some of the thermal limitations created by the panels by using more fans. That's been shown to work. NZXT has been fairly successful with it with like the H710, where NZXT has overcome an inefficient design by throwing a lot more brute force in there. The downside is you start creating more noise and it is inefficient. So at some level you start trading off where is it really cheaper to do this front panel design and throw more fans in there? Or does it make more sense to cut out half the fans and just make a front panel that actually breathes? It's possible to meet halfway. Uh, Lee and Lee has done it with their O11 where they've still got glass and glass and then intake on the side. So it's kind of hidden, but MSI is not quite there yet. So anyway, it looks like MSI has got a, uh, we genuinely think MSI's people doing the cases have the right intentions, which is to improve the product. It's just that the company is new to this and they don't have a lot of experience with cases yet. So it's gonna take them a while to get there and we're trying to push them in the right direction, but the changes have been really slow to come to fruition and some of that's because it's based on a supplier and they don't own the factory that makes the cases. So anyway, the two cases weren't really things that impress us too much, but we do want to see how the Gungnir performs with the mesh panel. That might actually be not completely terrible uh, because you'd have at least half of the front would be open. So we'll see, it might do okay in testing, especially with that many fans. It could do well compared to a lot of the other cases that are less efficient still. The pricing's about right. It's just the rest of the features we need to see improvement on. Anyway, that's gonna be it for MSI. The X570 Tomahawk's a board we want to look at. We should have one on the way after we get back and check back for our factory tours. You can subscribe for more or click the link in the description below for additional factory tour footage from our trip here in Taiwan. And uh, or go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or store.gamersnexus.net. We'll see you all next time.